Battle Block Sengoku. How do you play? So this is a samurai era set of wargames rules that I wrote. The idea being that it's a nice fast play system with easy to remember rules and you don't need uh, much space or many miniatures to play. The name Battle Blocks comes from the fact that it's designed to be played with homemade blocks of armies that you paint um, using wooden blocks that come from tumbling tower sets, for example. You stick the labels on, which are provided in the rules, and you can get game in really quickly. If you don't want to use blocks, you can use miniatures, of course, or counters, or use the labels as they are, print them out on paper, and away you go. So this is going to be a how to play video, how the game works, how the system works, so you can get an idea of whether or not you want to uh, download the rules. They're completely free. Uh, they're on War Games Vault. So there's a link in the description where you can get hold of them. And as I say, you can get them for free. Or if you want to buy me a coffee, you can uh, you can choose how much you want to pay and uh, you know send me some money. It'd be very much appreciated. So contest page, very simple. The rules only really take up uh, three pages. So I'm going to go through the rule book and just teach you how to play the game. So we have a brief introduction. Some of the equipment that you need. So as I've mentioned, you need a couple of armies, the labels for which are provided in the rules. Some way of, of measuring distances, measuring stick or tape. There's measuring rulers provided. Five six-sided dice per player. Three of one color and two of another. So I have, for my yellow army, I use yellow dice and black dice. And then for my red army, I have red and white. The reason you need two different colors is because two of the dice are used for initiative and the three of the single color are used for combat rolls. It just stops you accidentally rolling your initiative dice and forgetting how many combat um, command points you have to spend. You don't need terrain for the game. You can play a, you, you can play a game on a, a blank coffee table, but obviously terrain makes the game more fun. And two or three pieces is all you really need. Um, I use felt. Uh, check the link uh, which has just appeared to find out how you can make some more games terrain nice and cheaply. And that's exactly how I do it. So this here is an example of what I mean when I say blocks. So these are the uh, blocks that I've made, um, hence the name Battle Blocks. There's four basic types of unit in the game. So we have hero units, elite units, standard units, and weak units. Uh, they're fairly self-explanatory. Heroes represent your elite kind of colorful samurai characters who are, you know, they're going to be dueling against each other and, um, you know, they're the best soldiers you have. Elites are units of very powerful, strong samurai. Standard units are your mixed formations of archers and uh, ashigaru, and weak units represent sort of levies or, or perhaps smaller units. Setting up the game is nice and easy. So both players roll 1d6, you re-roll ties. The player who rolls highest is the attacker, the player who rolls lowest is the defender. Defender sets up some terrain as outlined in the rules. The attacker gets to swap a couple of pieces of terrain and then the armies are both deployed no closer than 12 inches to each other and if you're playing on a two foot by two foot surface, then they're deployed six inches in from their board edge. Rules of play. So the basic rules of play are very simple. Turn sequence. So you determine initiative first of all, which is where both players roll 2d6, re-rolling ties. The highest of the two results is the initiative player, and the number that they rolled is the number of command points that are available to both players for that turn. Now, for the very first turn of the game, the attacker always goes first, regardless of who rolls highest, but you still use the highest roll of the two. So there's an example down here. You can see the player rolling the black dice rolled higher. So he would go first, and they would both be using um, seven. They, they would both have seven command points to spend through the turn. Movement's very simple. All units move three inches, as shown here. They can't stack on top of each other. They can't pass through for any enemy units and they can only move through gaps in terrain or units if uh, more than 50% of their base width would be able to fit through the gap. So it's nice and simple. So you give them command points and they spend those to either move or you can refresh units which have been uh, disordered. After you've finished moving all your units, you then go on to shooting. Shooting's nice and easy. You shoot two inches in your forward 90 degree arc, as shown here on the diagram, and you roll two dice and you're looking to hit on four or more. There are modifiers for terrain, but essentially if you score hits, then you'll be doing damage. One hit causes the unit to become disordered. The second hit forces a retreat. And you cannot destroy units through shooting. That's an important thing to note. Then we move on to the melee phase. So during movement, if any of your units moved into edge contact with enemy units, they will then fight melee. 
It looks like a kind of a long section, still only really half a page, but it's very simple. Any units in melee combat, roll three dice each. You, you pair units off. So in this example here uh, on the page, you can see there's there would be 1v1, 1v1. So you, you pair units off. Any overlapping units provide a bonus. And there's other modifiers shown here on the table. So for example, um, if you're flanked, if you're outnumbered, if you're weak, elite, or hero, it tells you right here what, uh, what modifier that provides. And there is a quick reference at the back, which has all this information on as well. So all you need when you're playing the game is the back of the book and you're good to go. Damage is very simple. As I mentioned previously, if you have a fresh unit that takes a hit, they become disordered. Disordered units retreat if they're hit. And if a unit retreats and gets another hit in the same combat round, um, then that unit is destroyed. So as I say, very simple. You roll three dice, you're looking to hits on four. And then um, sometimes units will charge forwards. If they destroy an enemy unit, units can retreat, which is very simple. They turn around and move one inch away. So that can be bad because if you're not careful, units can retreat and then you can have further enemy movement next turn attacking them in the rear, which is, is not good. That gives them a, a, a good bonus, more likely to destroy your unit. To win the game, you destroy one third of your opponent's army. So in a standard game where you're using 12 units each, you're looking to destroy four enemy units. There's some optional rules here. So first to fight uh, is a rule where essentially your units will be eager to get into combat before the first combat round of the game. So your, some of your units might charge forwards, um, possibly ruining any plans that you had to keep your units in formation. Personal challenge, just add a bit of color to some of the hero units. So if, if a hero kills another hero, that counts as uh, a double for victory points. And battle formations. So in the back of the rules, there are some markers which you can use to show attack and defend formations, which allows you to, it's kind of an abstract way of providing a way to use the uh, unit formations which um, were debatably used by individual units within within an army um, to make them more strong in the attack or in the defense. So you, you can do those. You can assign a formation to a unit and it will give them a bonus through the turn. Multiplayer games, very simple point system if you want to create your own scenarios and things like that because I do encourage people to do that. Um, the game will work for recreating historical scenarios as well. And then there's an example of play. So I find examples of play always really handy in, in, in war games uh, or any rule books really. So there's a nice simple example of play here which goes through everything I've just described and teaches you how to play. Then we've got some army formations here which don't have any direct gameplay purpose but they do let you perhaps create some interesting scenarios on the table. You can pit some formations up against each other and it's just something fun that I thought I'd include because it's something I enjoy doing. You can test out formations and see how they perform against each other. And then uh, there's a little couple of pages here describing how I made the blocks and how you can do so as well. So the game's very simple. I've covered the basic mechanics. Um, yeah, uh, definitely uh, check it out. As I say, it's totally free. But if you want to you know, send some money my way, I can get a coffee, then that would be much appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.